Cool. That's fine. Should we get a chair now then? Uh, the Caribou Cup is going on. The Caribou Cup? Welcome to Mostly Sports. I'm Mark Titus. He is Brandon Walker. Today is Wednesday, December 20th. We are live from Chicago. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? First of all, whose glasses are these? They were just sitting at my desk when I got here. And you just put them on. I did. Well, I had to. They were sitting I'm going to wear the glasses. Why wouldn't I? I look cool as fuck, don't I? Yeah. You do have a massive head, though. A huge head. They have to. Yeah, I'm the only guy in the world where when you put the glasses on, they go out. <laughs> <laughs> they go they go sideways. You do look great, but uh. Oh I know I feel good. I feel good. Uh basketball? Mm-hmm. NBA basketball, two things there. Well we might as well just address our, our, our fun time we had last night. I'd like to say this about Jerry after dark. Jerry is a beast. Yeah, Jerry rules. Jerry's built different. Yeah. Jerry's Jerry's a motherfucker. Yeah. So go subscribe to Jerry after dark. We had a good time with him. Uh, I have broken fingers. I kiss Jerry. Yep. I have a belly full of marshmallows. I don't know how they're coming out. I set a world record for uh, most mouse traps. You did, Me- mega mouse most, trap. Mo- I, I did the mega mouse trap. Most mouse traps on. How how would you describe this? The most uh, fingers, most, the most simultaneous fingers, fingers in a mouse trap. Most simultaneous fingers in mouse traps. Yeah. In, diff- in, in ma- different mouse, mouse traps. traps yes. Yeah. I did ten, 10 fingers in 10 mousetraps. Mm-hmm. You kissed Jerry on the lips. I did. Um, yeah. And that was before the stream started. Like, that wasn't even <laughs> we <know> we <laughs> That wasn't even part of it. I made him take his shirt off. But, uh, I mean, goddamn, it was, uh, it was quite, the, quite, quite the... I don't know how he does that every week. He's, he's, he's built different than me. He'll literally do whatever the chat tells him to yeah. do. <laughs> the only thing about that is I'm a little concerned 
about my friend Jerry. Yeah, we went in. Jerry was like, so here's the plan. We're going to do these challenges. Yeah. Uh, if you fuck up the challenges, we'll eat the marshmallows, and then we'll yeah. start a fire. And I was like, great plan, Jerry. Let's do it. And then we're like 30 seconds into the plan, and yeah. Jerry's like, the chat says we have to suck each other off. So, <laughs> <Right>. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm just concerned. I'm like, what? I'm just concerned because he's building an incredibly, incredibly big audience and everything, and I'm just concerned they're going to kill him. That's <laughs> all. Are. Yeah, dude. They're, they're, they're going to kill that man, and he will just walk right into death. The chat plus Lucas is a, is a terrifying combination because he yeah. will do whatever they say. Yeah. And oh, he's, he's incredible, but I just – You and I were pussy bitches because we had the audacity to be like, um – no, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not going to do that. Well, I, I mean, I did the mouse traps. Yeah, I, I got shirtless. Anyway, um, that was awesome. Jerry after dark rules. Uh, yeah. I, I have immense respect for Jerry. Um, and uh, yeah, we did have a lot of fun. I, I right. We had we had fun. Oh, I had, we had fun. I had, a, yeah. I had a ton of fun. Yeah, we had fun. The super chats never stop. Yeah. How much money is that? Is that thing bringing in? I don't know. That's like got to be our most profitable show after watching like the Chaco for what two yeah. hours? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Something. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing is like Brandon and I did get a, a slight amount of shit because we wouldn't. We weren't gung ho about everything, and I just want to say that like that's what makes Jerry Jerry. That's yeah. the whole point. If every single person in this office was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it to everything that gets tossed out there, then there wouldn't be no Jersey Jerry. Yeah. That's what makes Jerry special is that Jerry is like, yeah, shot collar, go ahead, throw it on my yeah, let's, yeah, let's Give it do to it. me. <laughs> um, anyway. All right, NBA basketball. Awesome. We have we have two stories from NBA basketball. First of all, it's also National Signing Day. I can get to that in a minute. Uh, I've also invited a couple of guests. I don't know if they'll show up, so we'll see. There, I've laid it all out. Last night, Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. You familiar with Steph Curry? I've heard of him. Yes. Glasses on or off? I don't know. I like I liked it at the start. Um, Let's just try this. Hmm. Now it's just me. Yeah, no, it's not much to that. Your face, which is yeah, right? Not great. Yeah, it's not a bad great. face. It's a bad face. You have a bad face. I got a bad head and bad face. But the glasses do look. The more so I look tiny. at it, the, the, the more I look at it, it it's comically. Strange. If I put a hat or glasses on my head, they immediately become tiny. <laughs> but if you look at me just like this, you don't. You say, don't look that bad. You don't yeah. say he's got a gigantic head. No, no. But no. if you put something on the head, <laughs> you realize how big it is. It's a massive head, dude. You know what? You, you know what else is big? Your torso. Yeah, my whole, <laughs> the middle of me, my stomach. Uh, last yeah. night Steph hit, hit, scored thirty three points, hit the uh, dagger three to beat the Celtics. Uh, that's not really that big of news. But afterwards, Shaq was on uh, whatever Shaq is on, and he was like, "What is that show officially called? Inside the NBA? Yep. Yeah, it's the best show. The, it's that, that's the best show anybody, on TV, by the way. Does anybody call it that? We just call it like the." TNT guys, right? Uh, I or inside, yeah, I guess either way. I either guess way. I knew the name. Yeah, immediately so inside I, the I NBA, people do th- still use that. It. Is the best show on TV and has yeah, has yeah. been for like a yeah. decade. It is so good. Um, he says, "Is it time that we start discussing Steph Curry for the greatest of all time?" To which I immediately said, "No, no, no." But then my mind did that white girl meme of well, well, the. You know that that girl. Oh yeah, where she's like she like drinks something and then yeah. she's like, eh, yeah, no, yeah, mm. yeah. Well, or maybe the Alonzo morning like. Mm. Yeah. What other what other gifts come to mind when you think uh, of Shaq saying? Um, Curry? there's <laughs> <laughs> that's about all I got, I guess. <laughs> um, oh, that, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that no, no, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that came that that gift came to my mind. That gif came to my mind, uh, because. I can immediately dismiss him as the GIF? goat. However, Did you say GIF? The GIF. You, you peppered in a GIF, though. I said GIF. You just say GIF, though. You said GIF. Oh, I said and GIF. Then you said GIF. And I then said you went GIF. Back I said GIF. that GIF of that. You're playing girl. both sides. Yeah. You're no, I, I, sides. I said the GIF of you that. You said the GIF. I said the GIF of that. No, you said the GIF, but then hold you on, said. Hold on. And then you said GIF. I said and the went GIF, back to GIF. I said the GIF of that girl doing that face is one of the most memorable GIFs out there. <laughs> so what? what's the problem? You're playing both sides. I'm not playing any side. Take a stand. No, that GIF, is a, GIF. that GIF is a great GIF. I, I don't know what you want me to, what you want me to say. Um, yeah, how how egregious is saying Steph Curry is the goat? To so he, he it's extremely egregious to me. I I don't think he can be discussed for the goat. However, 
if you want to start lining people up for the GOAT argument, he ain't far, very far back in the line. Here's my thing. I think it is absolutely egregious to put Steph Curry on the GOAT tier, um, but also we are a sports show that needs to fill a little over an hour of content, so yeah. let's talk about it. Um, let's, I, discuss it. <laughs> let's you, discuss it. First of all, you cannot. this should not be discussed. At whatsoever. Let's, whatsoever. Talk, let's talk about it. It's, <laughs> let's break this down. <laughs> let's break down why you shouldn't discuss this. Um, no, I, I, I understand. But he's top, is he top five? I think he no, might be top five, no, no, no. top five to seven. No no, 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 but but I do understand why people, because Steph does have that that innate ability. Is it mm -hmm. ability? I believe the French call it a certain. I don't know what. A je ne sais quoi. No, uh, I, I bleu de chanel. I think you're thinking of crepes. You're thinking <laughs> of, <laughs> bleu de chanel. You're thinking of crepes, <laughs> the tiny pancakes. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Here we go. Dramatic. Do you want the glasses? <laughs> um, no, but, but Steph has like that intoxicating thing where like you watch him have when he's at his peak and when he's on yeah. fire, when he has moments like he has last night, you do just get carried. It's a it's a runaway freight train of like, this is the most special thing I've ever seen. And I, yeah, it, it, it is really wild how he, he is. He is likable to the point that like, do, are there Steph haters? Not really. I think there are yeah. some. Yeah. There I are. There, there, Who hates it? I think yeah. there are some. There's not as many Steph haters as. Did you just raise your hand as a Steph hater? A little bit. You're a Steph hater. Hold on. First oh. of all, there's a lot to talk to unpack over here for a second. Why are you dressed like that? Because we have our holiday gathering later in the office, White Elephant, and I thought maybe I would dress up a little bit. I didn't want to wear my full Christmas sweater because it's way too hot in this studio. Connor, are you but, wearing no socks? No, I am wearing socks. So this is what I mean. I'm all out of sorts. My stomach is still in shambles. I didn't have long high socks that I could wear, so I'm wearing ankle socks with these shoes. Long oh, high socks? Those oh, no. like it's dress either, socks. It's either ankle socks or long high socks. That's your two like dress socks. You know what I'm okay, talking about. Okay, sure, sure, sure. But anyway, I am wearing socks. I can assure you. But I look like <gasps> an idiot with my shins. Just like a politician. I can assure you, the yeah, American sure. people. I'm wearing socks. <laughs> yeah. um, don't don't let people spread rumors that Connor Griffin no. does not wear socks. I don't want that publicized anywhere. It has yeah. come to my attention that some in the media are saying I don't wear socks. That is patently false. <laughs> that is, I can assure you, America, I'm wearing socks as we speak. Correct. Uh, you're a Steph hater, though? I used to be. Why? Because back when it was at the height of the Warriors-Cavs run, obviously everybody was saying, you know, Steph Curry – might be getting up there with LeBron, might be passing him, right. and I, I hated that whole discourse. All right, so everybody, ha every great athlete has haters. I, I, I yeah, I, yeah. I don't mean to say you don't have haters, nobody. you don't have fans, right? Uh, but Steph, what is it about Steph that yeah, when he plays well, um, it's it like you just throw all reason out. And you, well, you you are comfortable just being like that's three the greatest reasons. shit I've ever seen. When we all know he's not the greatest, but I also yeah, when I saw Shaq say that, I was like yeah, fuck it, dude, that was pretty awesome what he just did. Three reasons. He's small. Yeah. He's cute as hell. <laughs> and number three, number three, he can fucking shoot. Yeah. And, like, there's no discussion he's the GOAT shooter. Like, that's that's not – like, he has put well, that discussion so eh. – Well, I mean, I, I couldn't Here's imagine – Here's the thing. Here's I couldn't imagine thing. anybody that I, would be in the conversation. Steph has him. a great resume um, as far as the shooting goes. Uh, he, you know – all-time three-point leader, yeah. um, four NBA championships, right. uh, just continues to, to the high, highest free throw percentage you ever. Know one, you know one thing he hasn't won? I, the Chili's three for me, three for you, three for all of us. Right. Three-point championship. Well, it's not like there's a tr – Oh, fee. <laughs> if he's such a good shooter, why doesn't he have one of those? It's <clears throat> a great question, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> you just crown your own question? It's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. In fact, I'm gonna give myself another trophy for that question. <laughs> hmm. What That's a great question. question. Uh I like that this trophy doesn't say anything on it other it's the Chili's logo. Yeah. It's two of them. <laughs> when they were making that, Chili's yeah, was like, who's this for? Oh, just, yeah, just put the logo on. Fuck it, just throw the logo on. <laughs> just put, put that the is <laughs> this is by far the the worst thing about me. So I, I fucked up my perfect attendance record yesterday, right. obviously. Yeah. Connor, you're, you're the only one on the show with perfect attendance now. I think I am, Mark. Um, And the only part of me, as I'm as I'm hugging the toilet, still throwing <laughs> up at 8.30 a.m., and I'm 
looking at Google and it's saying it's going to take 20 minutes to get to the and I'm like, all right, I got 10 minutes. I can if I can rally in 10 minutes and get behind the wheel. Yeah, I can get in there. The only reason I wanted to fight it and and rally and still come in and do the show was to, was to talk trophy. about this. <laughs> talk about this trophy. I didn't care about the perfect attendance thing. I didn't care about anything else. I just just real quick a preposterously sized trophy. Preposterous bro. trophy. It's got some weight to it. <laughs> Preposterous trophy. I mean that's <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's that's like you've you've a lifetime achievement award or something. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, I gotta find where I'm gonna put this in the studio. This is uh... here. What if what if you put it? Um, I don't know. Put it like put it right there. No, no, no. Put no, it right no, there. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Because see, because that would be on your side. Put it on you top. Did not win. You actually you actually lost. Well, I didn't lose in horrific fashion. I didn't lose. I didn't finish last. I finished you... in the middle. You made what, the middle's fine. You had you made what was your score seven? Life is all about middles. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I felt yeah, Steph's confident. a pretty good shooter. Steph's not bad. Um, but the real talk, and this this uh, maybe this is tedious. Maybe this is boring. I don't know. Jordan obviously is where he is. LeBron is right behind Jordan in in any objective measure. In my in my opinion, then you got like guys like Kareem. But I think starting at four, you can start discussing Steph for that spot. Now, there's one big problem. Basketball is not the fourth best player of all time. Basketball is a, a, a two-way a sport where you play offense and you play defense. Yes, correct. And when discussing goats, we do tend to only discuss offense. Yes. Well, I mean, although Michael casuals Kareem, like you, uh, casuals like you only. When did I become offense. a casual here? I mean, when you're when you're tossing down Steph Curry is. Maybe the fourth best player. Ever. Well, all I said was Shaq talked about it. Is Shaq a casual? Some would say. Oh, uh, who would say that? Uh, if Shaq's not a casual, then why does hasn't he won? Chili's <laughs> 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 three for you. Have you ever? What was the thing called? Three, three for, for me. Three, three for, for me. Three point contest yeah. presented uh, by Pardon My. Are you just gonna keep bringing it out <laughs> and keep presenting? It? Oh yeah. Well, if LeBron's <laughs> the goat, how come he's? Uh. There? Oh yeah. Well, if Epstein has a list, how come this trophy isn't on it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, no, Steph. Steph's awesome. Uh, I he's he's, I think from probably <laughs> good point. <laughs> probably tenth. I'm, I'm, I'm trying just to think. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> where where could you say Steph Curry is ranked? Before I'm like, uh, I think you can start. I, I feel like it's. I, I, I feel like if you said Mark, I think 10, you I'm can okay. start at four. I think you can start at four. I think you can. St now I don't know if I put him at four, but I think at four you got to start saying. Well, it, it could be Wilt. It could be this guy. It could be, uh, I, I'll say this. I'd have him higher than Kobe. <laughs> that's... Because, listen. That's... If Kobe was such a great player, <laughs> how come he doesn't have... <laughs> uh, no, it's, I mean, Steph, Steph's defense... Uh, Steph's defense is, is is the problem with all of this. I would say I would say top ten. I'm okay with. I, I don't actually know. I've never really like put together my list. Yeah. Um. But if you said Steph Curry's a top ten all time player, I don't really get too upset about that. I think yeah. top five is where I I'm, think he's now, comfortably on, top ten. I think he's comfortable. If you top said top five, that's where I would say, hang on a second. So well, I need you. I to think flesh he's going to end up slotting around seven or eight, probably. Yeah. Why don't you make a list right now, but in no particular order? No order. No order. No just particular order. Your top right. ten in no uh, order. Top ten in order, or yeah, I but going in order. In, ten NBA guys in general. So no order. order. Let's start with Michael Jordan. Okay. Or LeBron James. We can start with either one of those in no, no order. In no order. Yeah. Um, Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. LeBron James, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? <sighs> Magic. Randomly, yeah, this is Magic, the problem. No like, order? Steph's not better than Magic. Steph's not better than Bird. I mean, Magic didn't Steph's, play defense. Steph's either. not better than Tim Duncan. Magic didn't play defense. Steph's not better than Kobe. I mm, that mm. Steph's not better than Kobe. Kobe's not like that's pretty goddamn good, man. Kobe's not goat tier. Like I'm, I'm not yeah. a guy that's like throw yeah. Kobe in the goat conversation. Yeah, but Steph's not better than Kobe. Well, he's go to the next tier. Probably. He's better right now than Kobe. I mean, Kobe's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that, but better than uh, Tim Duncan too. He's probably better than Tim Although Duncan. Although Tim Duncan right is now. still with us, correct? Mm -hmm. Good for him. Yeah. Uh all right. Anyway, but Steph 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 is the GOAT, I think. Uh maybe not, because Jordan Jordan had it too. Steph is Oh, uh, the fuck you uh, the game's over? 
That's no, just like what I was talking about earlier of like there is like an intoxicating thing about him where yeah. like like the Steph Curry experience is I, I, I will give you that, that the Steph Curry experience is a goat tier experience. Like when Steph Curry is feeling it and uh, and he's unstoppable and he's hitting clutch shots and the Warriors fans are going bananas. That experience watching he, he can take a regular season game and make it must watch TV. Like that shot that, last that night. A few players can. The shot that he hit. The dagger. But the Jordan experience is still way better. In this he game. shoots – He, the the way it looked, the way it goes in the rim, the yeah. way it just it just falls from the sky, like he's the only guy doing that. Yeah. And he's the only guy with that kind of flair for the dramatic in, in today's game. Yeah. Um, and you're right. Which can, is which, it, that part of it, I think, makes people bump it up, him up. LeBron has it. Uh, LeBron player, maybe actually. doesn't have it anymore, but he has it where – he can play a regular season game, and it is an event. And Steph has yeah. that too. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure how many guys have had that in history. Yes, I, I think you can confidently say that he, Steph Curry, is the most revolutionary player in the history of the game. In the I don't think that. you can confidently say that. You can't say that. I Why not? Well, there's been there were guys back then that he's he's changed the way they, everybody in the league. They plays rebuilt the, game. the court for George Mikan. Yeah. But they rebuilt Kareem Abdul Jabbar got the slam dunk banned in college basketball. That was college basketball. Well, NBA. Is, is is college basketball not basketball to you? Uh -oh. Did I say the most revolutionary player in basketball? Or did I say NBA? I forget what I said. I'll shut up. You said that with a lot His of tummy hurts. Give him a break. All My right? tummy does hurt. His tummy no, no, I I I think Nobody knew that in that, the, that you got three points if you made it from behind that line until Steph came along. I mean, he's changed no, I do the way teams I, are structured. I, I, I do he's think, changed the I way everybody in the league plays the game. Scoring is at an all-time high. He and a couple other guys certainly made made the the NBA teams realize three is more or, valuable, or more than, valuable two. than two. Yeah, and it took them a while to realize that. Shockingly, <laughs> like it took them decades to be like, wait a minute, <laughs> that line, I can go behind that line and get more. <laughs> And and it took guys like Steph and everything. No, too. he did revolutionize the sport. Sure, yeah. Some say for the worse, but he yeah. did. And I, I remember, I remember seeing a stat when when Steph was early in his career, like maybe five years in, where Larry Bird finished his career with two hundred and eighty-two made three pointers. Steph had that before like yeah. the All Star break, or yeah. something like that. He also he also ruined pickup basketball. Steph did. Cause, How? Because people just jack threes now. They weren't already doing that because I've been jacking threes my whole life. Yeah, I have, but I've but that that's my game. Like that was my You're a now jacker, all the uh, yeah. I like lot. to jack. I like to jack it. <laughs> yeah. People know that about me. You jack a lot. Yeah, you've been jacking forever. I've been jacking it. Did you for most of my life? I've been jacking. Did it. your dad teach you how to jack? <laughs> no, I, that's the thing is I I think when you're born in Indiana, you just kind of you have that no, natural all white kids yeah, know how to yeah. Jack you just grow up like knowing how to jack it, and yeah, that was no. I, I is Steph the king of jacking it. I think you'd have to say so. Yeah. yeah. Damian Lillard is trying to, you know, he had. He's a jacker. He, he's, he had his run there where he was like, I can jack it as well as anyone else. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So you think when they retire that, that uh, it'll be done? Jacking will be, it'll be, it'll be jacked off? <laughs> was that one too far? I am curious what they're going to do if, uh, do you think the NBA will ever like nerf the three point line? I think the somehow like I think the players have done it themselves. I I I think you know because now used to guys like Steph, great shooters, guards would would be specialists and they could do this. Now you've got you've got if you're six ten, you don't have a job in the league unless you. That's can what shoot I mean. Three. Yeah, that's what I, when I was when I was coming up. If you yeah. were a shooter, that was like a specialized thing. Correct. You were. You're the only and guy. And you can walk shoot. into a gym and say, oh, well, there's a shooter. There's right a there. shooter because it was the white guy. But now, <laughs> yeah. now there's a 6'10 guy yeah. who's 240 who in 1980 would would have 12 points and 19 boards. Right. Is is playing defense and shooting threes. Right. That That's what I mean by revolutionary because this yeah. is a, a guy who's tiny as hell. Not tiny as he's hell. He's not tiny as hell. But uh, uh, relatively. He's why, why does that happen with Steph where everyone pretends like he is – like he, he's got – because his NBA, father, his fa he's got NBA genetics. I'm his, saying his like, mom was like well, an NBA all players are NBA players are freaks. Player. He still looks small. What is he? Six three? Is he six two? Six two yeah, he's three. six three, and his dad he's got right, right. He's got insane yeah. genetics. But he he he's still got the baby face. He looks like a baby out there. I know, but why? But why? I, like we all know his story at this point, and we treat him like he's. No, that's him. I don't know. He, well, I'm, he's I'm, got I'm, his khaki pants on. I'm saying, you know, you, we were talking about, like, is, was Kareem revolutionary? It was George Mikan. Like, Steph Curry came into the league at a pretty average size and was able to transform it entirely. Whereas, yeah, if they banned the dunk, it's because somebody's absurdly tall. Like, this is just 
a pure skill talent who all and I'm not saying Kareem wasn't a talent, but Steph Curry for I mean the entire generation of this NBA has shifted how we play. It is wild that Steph gets treated like a, an unlikely story to yeah. the NBA um, when he has the genetics of freak athletes and was around the uh, game was around the game life, yeah. his entire life had access to the best coaches, the best resources you could possibly have. And then, meanwhile, LeBron is like, who gives a shit? Everyone knew he was going to be great. When, when he, was, he pulled himself up. Off, yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. dirt poor and yeah. acting with, with a single mom. <laughs> yeah. You know who you can blame for that? Who's that? Seth Greenberg for not offering him. Oh, that's right. That is the genesis of the Steph Curry underdog story. If, if, if Seth Greenberg would have just given Steph Curry a scholarship to Virginia Tech like he should have, this whole story would have been told differently. Does, yeah. does Seth Greenberg offer LeBron James? I'm sure he would have. Oh. <laughs> That'd be funny if that's the, but everyone knew he was going to Ohio State, that's right? The story of LeBron is like, and of course, as we remember, when he was coming out of high school, was not even offered a scholarship to Virginia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had his doubters along the way. Now uh, we, we did this show yesterday. Uh, you you watched the show and everything, right? I did not. I watched uh, I watched vomit uh, come out of my mouth into a toilet for about the thirteenth hour in a row. Uh, just uh, hearing you say that made me want to vomit. Yeah, I retired from Henny, and uh, yeah, I put out the statement that I I am officially retired from Hennessy, and people were upset about it. Um, Boy, that that I'm back tweet's gonna hit though. I got a lot of that. Yeah, I got a lot of people it's saying. Hit. There's no it, way you're actually. Retired. You know it's coming. I don't know. Man. You're already I starting think. to soften right now. I, I I so listen. I'm flattered that people are saying that because uh, I my my interpretation of that is that uh, you you believe that the can, the game can't exist without me. Like I'm such a legend of the game that it's like how will this how will this game go on without him? Yeah. Um. It's it's not that. So I have much. to come back to save the game. I get it. I get it. But <laughs> it's. it's <laughs> I think you're going a two a couple steps further than I was oh, yeah. going to take it. Um. Henny Friday, by the way, coming Friday nine nine a.m. on Friday, you'll have our two hour. Have you edited that yet? You have not. Uh. As of now, two hour and fifteen minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that at least fifteen minutes. I I said. I've set a lot of world records this week. I set the world record for the most mouse traps yeah. simultaneous on. You might have set the Hennessy record. Fingers. I think I, I there's a good chance I set a record for the most Hennessy consumed by one man in one sitting for a <laughs> a mid thirties a mid thirties white guy. Certainly. <laughs> period, dude. I was fucking slamming that shit. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Did you when, guys when, uh, when you were outpacing my sweet tea output with Hennessy? Yeah, yeah. It's a problem. I, I literally drink more Hennessy <laughs> than you drink sweet tea. Um, did you guys? Yeah, I didn't watch the show. Did you guys talk about the Eagles being frauds? I don't I, I remember we if we brought that up. I we could well, rehash we it for we a second. Talk about it again, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to. We we did I had pitch a it fairly quickly. Yeah, we could talk about it. I had a, I had a question, and yeah. this is just not really. We didn't talk about this yesterday. Um, did Big Dom ruin the Eagles season? Because mm. everything. No, that can't be right. Because the Phillies fans said that Big Dom is, is actually a net positive and a that legend he's, and he's a, a legend. And it was and, the Big Dom game and all the scumbag shit that Philly yeah. does with sports is actually good and it works. And all yeah. the haters just hate it because they're mad their teams don't do it. And if your teams did it, you would be as good as our teams are. And our teams are so fucking good that we win everything. Yeah. We love our teams. You don't. Except when we lose everything. Right. We have. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me how many games they've won since Big Dom assaulted Dre Greenlaw. Yeah, how many games have they won? Brandon Actually, since I, Big Dom. I don't even know. Connor, uh, how many? Is it zero? Can't be zero. That's crazy. You could. But he he did that a few weeks ago. Like three. Yeah. What what's their losing streak? They have, right have, they, have the, they had a, the three a couple bye weeks in a row or something? They must have had some bye weeks. You could reframe it and say that. Uh, the Eagles are winless since the NFL uh, stripped Big Dom off of our sideline. Uh, I would argue he stripped himself by assaulting, uh, he did, he did viciously assaulting. Uh, uh, he, a he was player. the one who got hit. A defenseless player too. A defense, who, yeah. A defensive, not big enough to defend him. A defenseless, defensive player. Who's the? Uh, did Did you see the quote the Jalen Hurts said about uh, um, what did he say? Commitment. Commitment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then what? He, I wondered he was about asked what that. that means, and he was like, "I don't have a dictionary. It means like yeah. just being committed." Yeah. What do you think about that, Connor? What do you think about commitment? Can you define commitment for your quarterback? Um, keep in mind, there's a lap. Actually, there's a laptop in your lap currently. Yeah, but I was I was trying to think of it off the top of my head. I've never really like defined a word like that before. Hold on one sec. 
the state. Never. You've never defined. No, the but word? like, if you have to, how would you define the word, uh, like, excellence? Mark Titus. I would. That's I would good. define it as <laughs> champion of the Chili's. Three for me. Three point. That was easy. Shootout. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was and that's in the dictionary. Right that's yeah. true. <laughs> uh, no, no, bad, all around bad showing for Jalen Hurts on Monday night. Have we turned on Jalen Hurts? We should. As, no. As a city? Hey, hey, think about this. You always want to be on the cutting edge of sports. If you turned on him now, yeah, no. and on the off chance he does suck, you could be yeah. at the forefront of a movement. Turn on him now. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. It was Connor, hard. give us a soundbite where you're like, Jalen, maybe a little more practicing throwing the football, a little less practicing getting your ass pushed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No. How about what? What if you said this? What if you said this? What? What if you said, uh, you know, it, maybe it's better for the NFL if Jalen Hurts gets hurt on the tush push. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I will say, watching him throw two picks in crucial moments the other day, as I was uh, weaning off of Hennessy and just absolutely weaning <laughs> off of it, <laughs> as I was, as I was sloshed in the gambling cave, uh, trying to get back to a sober state. It was it was not fun at all. I heard in the aftermath of Henny Friday the other night. You know, he went home. I went home. You were just an hour later, just in there shooting basketball by yourself. <laughs> yeah, all night. I I was here until like midnight. Or, or maybe like twelve fifteen, uh, just because. So I watched the game in full, and then I was furious, and I went out on the basketball court, and I, that's how I just like get out my anger is I just shoot hoops, mm-hmm. and then I went and recorded a video in here, uh, a- angry, yelling at my camera, and then I went back out onto the basketball court, and I just started shooting hoops again for another. So like if we were a college basketball team or an NBA team, we would have had our social media guy. Uh, you know, anytime an NBA player has a bad game or loses, yeah, and then the social media guy just happens to be in the stands and say, "Oh, look, he's back to work right. an hour after the game." Right, we could have done that for Connor, but yeah, he is our social media guy. Yeah, so he did it for himself, and then did you do it for yourself? Do what for myself? I mean, he filmed himself and sent it to us. Did you? Did you put that out? I put it out on my own personal. Yeah, see, so yeah, I guess he did. He did do it for himself. Are you your social media manager? I I, I, I guess so. Yeah. I don't. I don't hire anybody to run my social. Yes, Evo. Uh, show some respect. We are considered social media specialists around here. Exactly. Is that what it's called? Evo is yeah. a, actually Evo is the social yeah. media specialist. What I'm are just you? a producer. I'm I thought he was a stats guy. Who made the uh, Who made the graphic that I was out indefinitely? Oh, that was Garrett yeah, Javers. Garrett. That was so far, yeah. Garrett's a goat. He that was so funny. Actually, I'm interested now. What do you have? What's everybody's title? What's your title? Uh, technically, I am a social producer. Evo, social media specialist. TJ? Senior producer. TJ's my boss. Brandon, you go. What's your title? Content personality. I think that's what was written on the contract. You know what my title is? (laughs) Champion. (laughs) (laughs) Please, three for me. (laughs) It's actually the definition of excellence. Oh um, wait the the uh, pronunciation guide there is way more confusing than the actual ex- excellence. <laughs> ex- yeah, that is. That doesn't help at all. I never know what to do with the upside down letters. Yeah, uh, Wikipedia is especially bad at that. If you see words, uh, yeah, the how, what do you, what is that? Excellence called? words. How you, how they spell them out to say them? A letters phonetic phonetics. Excellence. Yeah. Oh, the Wikipedia. She got sassy on that one. There's like umlauts on every letter somehow, and umlauts are made up word. Uh, what's the? Do you know what like the difference between a long U and a short U is? Yeah, one has the the curly thing, and one has the line. I remember in third grade, but I don't remember. Anything. Wait, I know I don't one, remember one which one. Like, like, what's a long O? Like short uh, music. O? Music is a short U, right? And gum is a long U, or is no, it back? Like no. a long E is like cheese. And a, a shorty is like chess. Did I do that right? Yeah. Did he do it right, or is that flipped? I think he did it right. Okay. So Music and gum. Which one, one's long? One, which one's short? One of them says the letter. Oh! Hey! Hey! All right. Oh, well, Compton. Well, Compton, Delaney <laughs> Walker. What's up, man? My cousin, Delaney Walker. He is there. Dude. <laughs> Hurting. Hurting. Thank you. Thank you for coming Hurt. in. Was, Mega mousetrap, Will. That was wild. Oh. Mega Mousetrap. Get these couch boys out. Delaney just showing off with the t-shirt today. That is a great t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Did you, we gonna, did you, you we have that shirt, about... or did you just get it real quick after oh, the... I had it. Yeah. I had it. I, you know, 
He's a perfect shirt to wear after. Yeah. You called your shirt guy immediately? <laughs> no, he goes to his closet. I, I got one I got for him. That's a perfect shirt. <laughs> yeah. I've, been I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Delaney Walker, Will Compton. Yeah. The, uh, the GMs of the black and the white team. <laughs> Are we actually on the drive here? I, I put together the entire all-white staff. You have the staff and everything now. Staff, roster, all of it. I imagine knowing NFL front offices as as I do, I mean, a lot a lot of white guys to choose from. We have the same problem off the field that they have on the field. Too many too guys. Many too many options. Too many. Too <laughs> many. It's just it was too hard to do. That's why I was telling him, like, with two weeks to prepare, their team's going to be arguing the whole time about who should be playing what. There's way too many. To choose from. Do you think it's going to matter who gets on the field? <laughs> it does to the it does to the players. Okay, all yeah, right. Like he he's been he's been getting messages. Players. I won't say names. He can say if he wants. Uh, to. Okay, so so when you no put man. that out, and guys weren't on the first or second team, they were like, "Hey, man, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, why did it make the list?" And I'm it's tough. <laughs> Already having problems in house. It, it's tough because I had like everyone had about five backups, and I'm like, this going to be tough. I don't know what to do. And we were talking about like the black team can have like seven different teams literally like seven teams in play we have so, one <laughs> yeah, imagine imagine being a white guy and not making a list that would suck we have yeah. a lot of depth at kicker and punter though oh yeah so we gotta yeah. sort that out um, yeah, yeah we do yeah. but we're they have zero a, depth we're strong yeah yeah you guys yeah the zero. black guys are gonna have to go for t- you're gonna have to go for it on that's three gonna count. work yeah. out in, in, in yeah, their just advantage gonna, they're just gonna score eight every time yeah you're going yeah. for two every play <laughs> every play zero long snappers no long snappers. Yeah, we'll have to use a center. Special teams will be a mess. You're lying. Never on, hold yeah. on. I never realized that. There's there are no black long snappers. No, Zero. none, none. Y'all just y'all don't want to do that. Are there no black? Just, Wasn't they, there they're, they're one black at, punter? They're actually they're, good at the sport. Pittsburgh. He plays for Pittsburgh. There's one black punter. He plays for Pittsburgh right now at the moment. I don't know his name. Do you, anyone of y'all know they his used name? Used to Harvin, right? I remember the Brown. Is it the I same guy that was on the Browns? The Harvey? No. What is his name? Presley oh, there Harvin. Go. There Presley go. Harvin. Did you play the for the Browns? That's also, the Presley Harvin the third. I would accidentally put that name on the white squad. I would have thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I There's would. been some guys I've had to search and look <laughs> right. like, oh, this kind of seems like a white name. Like, let me see if we get this one. Yeah, we've been um, doing that. So, is this something that has been talked about in NFL locker rooms before? Maybe not this specific thing, but uh, you know. Similar. Conversation similar to this. Yeah, similar. It's not like this came out of nowhere. Richard Mendenhall. Fortunately, you're here on the show. Because us, we, if we talked about this, it feels a little like Yeah, it would feel. I like to see uh, Mark's brain going like, you know, no. maybe not this specifically. Yeah. But, yes, every day. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's yeah. something that's like, that. oh, that's some white people shit. Like, if I walk in the shower with no slides on, it, oh, yeah. Right. That's some white people shit. Yeah. Loofah versus rag. Loofahs are more yeah. white people shit. Rags are more black people. Walking yeah. into the shower with a small dick. That's white people. White people. Shit. <laughs> but that's more of just a commonality. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, there goes Compton on his white people shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah grow, I, growing up playing basketball really fucked me up with, like, race relations in the real world. Because, like, I had an understanding of, like, you know, what, how white yeah. people and black people talk to each other based on like how we talk in the locker room, yeah. Yeah. and then I would yeah. go out in the real world, and I was like, "Oh fuck, dude!" Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like openly talk like this, you know. You got to know when to yeah. turn it yeah. off yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. All right, the, uh, yeah, you know for sure. I mean, you're in the basketball. Yeah. You're like the only white dude in those locker rooms. I, dude, I have many times in my life been the only white guy in gyms, uh, like at AAU tournaments, where to the point I have vivid memories of checking into games and the, the opposing coach would just yell, white guy, white guy, <laughs> shooter. Like, you, no joke. And I'm just like, God damn, they're just like that. But what it wasn't wrong. What a nod of respect, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're the only white guy, there's a couple times where I was the only one out there on defense and you kind of look around and you're like, yeah, I'm kind of. Yeah, you it. Look at me. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of the man right yeah. now. You're doing the Paul Rudd meme to yourself. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah, look at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, y'all don't have to talk about this the whole time. I had a topic that actually I want to throw. Have at you, you taken your shoes off, Brandon? My shoe is off. Okay. My left shoe is off. I don't know why. I think my foot was itching, and I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> Steph Curry. Y'all know who that is? Yes. Yeah. At what number of all time great can you start talking about him? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Y'all know how numbers work. Nine is another one. There's ten. I don't know what comes after that. Maybe the other guys can help. Yeah, so Shaq last night was like, when are we going to talk about Steph? 
being the goat, and Brandon was like, "That's a great topic." That's a great question. And I said, "It's kind of not. He's not the goat, but there is something Just about the Steph. greatest basketball player of all time." Yeah, yeah, but there is something about Steph that gets people whipped into a frenzy. Where like he has a like last night he went bonkers and hit clutch shots and beat the Celtics and did the go to sleep. like it was vintage Steph performance and something about Steph Curry gets people like just. Fired the fuck out. Just throwing out irrational shit. Like, yeah. dude, he's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And the, is he the – I got to say it. I have more fun watching Steph than MJ. And, like, you'll start you'll start saying shit that doesn't make any sense yeah. because you're just, like, drunk in the moment. Um, so we were trying to think rationally of, like, where – if someone came to you and was like, I think Steph's top five all time, are you like, no, hang on a second? I'm not as much of a basketball basketball yeah, expert. Really you let us do that I, entire you intro. In, you brought in too. Well, you know, you, no, let's you, go you back were to football, saying I was going to like chime in, but I was. But trying no, you're to get some you're more you're better for this answer. All right, I got something. Like you're 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 not a basketball expert, but like, what feels right to you? Just based on. <laughs> I mean, you saying top five in this generation or top five all time? All t oh, all time. Now I don't I don't see him in the top five. Top ten. All, top ten. I can see him placing top ten, all maybe right. number ten all time. I got a better topic for you boys. You know what today is? Jan or December 20th? Exactly. Today's National Signing Day. For oh, college yeah. football. Yes, it for is. For college football. Yes, and is. you've been you've been to work. You you uh you helped Nebraska land the number 1 quarterback in the country. We landed him. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Wait, did he sign? You he signed. He's signing like he signed. Oh, he, he yeah, has, he signed. He has signed. He has signed. he has signed. They put it out. He has oh, signed. Yeah. The chosen son has come home. Well, you talked it you talked it up. You talked it up. There was one point it was like a few weeks ago and I brought it back up in the uh at the shop and Taylor's like, dude, he's going to Georgia. I was like, Hey man, it's not until yeah. the day yes. that paper. anything can happen. But I, I was hearing uh I had heard that because – uh, his dad, Dominic Rayola, had played over 10 years in the league. He yeah. was a stud, pro bowler, went to Nebraska. His uncle, what's his uncle's name? Do you know it? Uh, Rayola is his last name. <laughs> yeah. offensive, so uh, he's an offensive line, line coach. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I heard during that last week they went out to visit him, you know, kind of do a last pitch. And I'm sure like, there, there's a lot of connection anyway because his dad, I'm sure, would love for him to go there. But, hey, make your own autonomous decision, decision what you want to do. But then his uncle stayed at the house the entire week so other coaches couldn't come in. Uh, it's pretty savvy. Savvy, pretty yeah. yeah. Savvy, yeah. Because yeah. you're Georgia, you're still trying to land him. I think he bought he bought a house out there, right? And was living out in Georgia. Well, they they transferred and played at Buford, Georgia, this year. Yep. The second they got, I don't know if they won the state championship or got eliminated. Did, did I hear that? Like his they uncle, peaced out. His uncle held him hostage, so no other. That's schools. what he was saying. That's yeah. the rumor. It's like the, the DeAndre Jordan. Oh yeah, shit? the way you said it and the way he said it are two different ways to say it, but they <laughs> yeah. mean the same thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we think great strategy. He's thinking, oh, he got kidnapped. And he got I kidnapped. <laughs> well, you can't kidnap somebody at their own house, though. You kidnap yourself to their house. That's what he said. He said the, the uncle went to their house and stayed, yeah. so nobody could visit. I think you can. That a, that's a reverse kidnapping. Yeah. No, yeah. that's like that's what Die Hard is. That's, that's squatting. Die Hard. That's not. That's the plot, a plot of, die of Die Hard. They go to the fucking Christmas party and they kidnap all those people and hold them hostage in their own. No, well, that's not their own. Those people are working there. We're that's talking their house, but it's a, it's their place of employment. Let's talk about whose house it is. Whose it's, house? It's Dominic Rayola's house. Who's his Sports brother? House? Okay. So it's the offensive line coach for Nebraska. So this is like, hey, you know, that's my brother. That's family. House. That's family. 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 Yeah. That's a family matter. That's using strategy combined with family. So he was. It wasn't. It, we'll was a, it was a squatting. Family. Family. It was a squatting more so than a kidnapping. It was a squatting. It was a squat napping. Okay. Yeah. All right. Smart he's, move on Nebraska's part. Uh, he's got to be day one starter, right? Or else he's going to enter Probably, the portal. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was told. <laughs> what if, he, <laughs> yeah. what if he, enter, he might enter the he's, portal I mean, he, the this is his third. This is his third school, and he hasn't even taken a snap of football. I think anymore. it might be more than that. Well, it's third college. Oh, third, that's right. Third, to Ohio State. State. Yeah. Didn't he go to like nine high schools? It was, he was some a ridiculous. These guys transfer high school. Yeah, I, I don't. And that that track record don't look good. No, it doesn't. That, he a portal. Uh, as soon as they don't. Is do he re is he reliable? Can you can you scouting report that I have is this is a genuinely good kid. From, so okay, wait a minute. Will. <laughs> 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 who, who the fuck would tell you? Oh, this is a shithead. Yeah. Who who in Nebraska would tell you? Yeah, there would you be, know we're gonna sign him, but fuck this. Boy, kid. he can yeah. sling it, but what a piece of somebody shit. Somebody would say. Somebody would say if there was like a concern or fathers too involved and stuff like that. Now tell me the truth. He flipped last week. How long have you known this? When did I know? I, that's weeks. what I was asking. It was. It was early last week before he went to. But you knew. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. 
I knew. No, I, I got it, it, it. It took everything in me. Not to say nothing. Not to mess around with it a whole lot. Because yeah. even when he came out the other day, I figured he was going to do it like a national signing day thing. Mm. Yeah. And so when it came out on Monday, I thought somebody had already fucked up and leaked it. Because I'm thinking like, yo, if this stays a secret, like there's no way this makes it to the weekend. Yeah. But then it did, and it's like, okay, well, I guess they have everything buttoned up in-house. So I have a take about Nebraska landing the number one quarterback. And okay. um, Missouri landed the number one overall player. Uh, Williams, Nwanere, Nwan- I don't know how to say Williams. What position? The O-lineman? Defensive lineman. The, defensive yeah, lineman. Defense, the O-lineman. Uh, uh, but, yeah, yeah, that's right. But Missouri landed the overall player. Nebraska landed the number one quarterback. And I think both of those things are fantastic for college football. Because I think one of the worst things that's happened over the last 20 years is every single year all the top guys go to Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, and then there's some Clemson and then there's some LSU. No. But the same teams are getting every single guy, and it's much more interesting and better for the no. sport if Nebraska's landing no. somebody, Missouri's landing somebody, Arizona's landing somebody. I disagree. Well, you're an Ohio State guy. Well, I disagree. Why do you disagree with that? Because I, I, think, I think college football, I think the ratings uh, are, are at their peak. Uh, I, think, uh, I think having two or three teams get all the best players is, is fine by me. Oh. I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think. So I think, in your mind this year, looking at this college football playoff, you wouldn't have been excited for the 12. I don't like playoff. this playoff field. No, um, but <laughs> <laughs> this playoff field in particular, no. Like this would have been a great year because a team like Mizzou, who, yeah, we all argue and probably like, hey, they might lose the first round, but they could have made it interesting at least in the first round. No, they could have. Yeah. They no, the 12, the 12th. Like, there's so much more parity. Awesome. There's yeah. so much yeah. more parity yeah. in college yeah. football. Yeah. yeah. But don't you think it's better when, when players realize they can go be a, a hero at Nebraska? They can go be it a is. legend. It's at definitely, it's definitely. I I do love stories like this from from this kid that he's got. He's a legacy kid and he's going to a lesser program. He's obviously good <laughs> enough to go to a. Uh, a great college football program, like Ohio, like Ohio State. State or Georgia, yeah. and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna do. Are you laughing because he's? Gonna do a, I'm not laughing. Just... No, I do. I love. I love story. Like th- this happens every so often in college basketball too. Like guys, a true underdog story like yeah. Nebraska getting a great player, yeah. as opposed to somebody like Ohio State like, who gets yeah, a lot of great yeah, players. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you chuckling because he said a lesser program like Nebraska? Yeah. Uh, we're just having a discussion. We just talk sports. We talk. That's that. Sports. That's the reality, though. I mean, and. Parody was coming before that because in the 90s, like when Nebraska was the peak, they were part of those top five teams because only a few teams played on TV. Now that you've opened up recruiting, and this is pre-NIL, but opening up recruiting before that, it's like Nebraska's been where they've been, but there's several colleges, you know, where – Who's in other college has kind of been in a similar situation that you're like, oh, we'd like them to come back. Miami, yeah, uh, not necessarily Florida State, but you get what I'm saying. Tennessee was yeah. down, Tennessee but you can back. go, you can go to, you can go anywhere now and start and know that yeah. you can go to the league. Yeah. And now with NIL, it creates even more parity where I think they're going to have to get it figured out. Is all this money flowing around because ultimately everyone's on a one day contract. That's it. Yeah, it's one day at a yeah. time. Yeah. It's crazy, which is insane. Uh, also, I, I don't fully understand the scheduling um, in college football where we're getting ready for the national championship. It is weird. Yeah, we're getting ready to play I didn't like know national championships, but also like you, guys, you have national signing day. Yeah. So like if you're one of the four teams playing for national championship, you're also like trying to make sure your recruits don't flip at the last second. Yeah. Yes. Well, when you guys for, yeah like the most important game. When you guys signed, it was in February. There was one. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. now there's two. They they started an early one about seven or eight years ago. And that's this one. That's this one. And but that's become the early one has really become signing day. There's still one in February, but most of the guys go ahead and get it done. And today. signing day at, at this in in this current era of college sports, what does it actually mean? Not a goddamn thing. It means you can feel good as a fan base for about five minutes because you're bringing in a bunch of high school players. But guess what? You're gonna have to recruit those motherfuckers next year too. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, it, but it means, but it does mean that they have to go to that school for. Yeah, they they, yes. si- they sign yeah. a letter for at least a day. For at least yeah, for yeah. Like they sign yeah. a letter of intent and they gotta they gotta enroll. You have to go to school. one class. Yeah, because here's yeah. what's happening too. Who's the quarterback from Arizona State that flipped from Florida? Uh, uh yeah, Rashada. Yeah. Jayden so Rashada, Rashada, he was uh he was signed to Florida. Apparently, he was gonna get a lot of money, mm-hmm. and then. Either Florida, something happened where he wasn't getting paid or got the money. So they weren't going to give him the dipping. fucking money. So it's like there's so many more hurdles now that yeah. college football's got to go through just to get these kids on campus and stay on campus. But let's say you're like a, a, a let's say you're a junior quarterback, right? And you've been there three years, and then a freshman comes in and he, they, the rumor is they've been given they've given him five million dollars to come to that school. Yep. Are you like I'm going to help this kid along or fuck that kid? It's a little so bit of fuck think, that I, kid, I, I, right? I think, I think it's both. 
Yes. I'm going to help this guy. I think every time that somebody like – You're going to help him by fucking him. When Rashawn Evans got drafted in the first round when I had just signed there, I was like, this fucking sucks. Yeah. But anytime we were in a spot to where, hey, I I feel like I can give him some advice or or try to help articulate what the coach is trying to say to him, I would take those opportunities. So it's like I wish I could fucking play and not say anything. But also, you know, if we're trying to win games and get this kid on the field and that's truly what they want and it's best for the team, which sucks at times, yeah. it's like, you know, you do those things. When, when y'all were playing, uh, if the portal had been what it is now, like earlier in your career, would you have, would you have, would you have transferred? No, no. I would have. I went D2, so I yeah. probably would have. Uh, Central Missouri. Central Missouri, yeah. yeah I probably yeah. would have. I don't, uh, I don't think so. I feel like I was yeah, way but- more brainwashed. <laughs> For somebody like, you know, you start a small school and you start to show that you've got ability, now the big schools are going to – that's yeah. a different kind of yeah. level of opportunity. That's good. That's why I think kids should use the portal, but now kids is just like, oh, I'm not happy here. Oh, they not – I got benched because I played bad. I'm going to hit the portal. Right. That's just what's happening nowadays. I feel like the portal was, should have been used for guys that went to smaller schools that's trying to up their self and go yeah. to a better, a better program, but that's not what it is. Yeah. I, I bet getting recruited is fucking sweet. It is. It, is. it it got it. It gets exhausting at the end. Yeah. Because I don't know what the rules are now. Like, can you still text around the clock and call around the clock? Eh, not you, really. Uh, I don't not think really. so. Could, I know there's like dead, 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 zone. dead, dead zones. Dead zones. Like after I got to Nebraska, but in those times, like there would be coaches. I remember this one coach from Iowa called me at like two or three in the morning. Yeah. And left me like a. I was, was recruiting a white he linebacker. Was, yeah, he yeah. <laughs> I was going to play cornerback, yeah. uh, and it, you could tell he was a little under the influence. But the next day, I, I just wanted to let you know how much we want you. And then, like, when you're trying to be a student at high school and go to like the basketball games in the winter, the volleyball games, all the big events, the school spirit, like getting the fan base being in it, and then you got to take. Each week, coaches are trying to come in and do in-home visits versus the official visits. They're taking up like your your afternoons, your evenings. You're having to sit there. So when you feel like you have your decision, you kind of just want to make it to get it over with. Because yeah. a big part of me wanted to go on an official to Notre Dame, but then I ended up backing out because it was like I had done three. It was like, yo, I want to fucking, yeah. I want to hang out now. How did you make your? How did you publicly make your decision? Did you do like a press conference? Did you do a? Uh no, I did. You, you you call the local paper? And say, yeah, it was something like that. But I, it wasn't like a yeah. it wasn't a hat selection or anything. You didn't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. You just uh, get in the school gym, at all? Yeah, our school, uh, school auditorium school gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for signing day itself. Yeah. yeah. Delaney, sometimes I like to romanticize the idea of being a guy like you that went to a smaller school, and yeah, it would have been cool to if you would have transferred, like you said, maybe to one of the top dogs in, in college football and, and got to experience all of that. But I like to romanticize the idea that like now you probably go back to your school and you're a fucking God. Whereas like if you were just another dude at Alabama, yeah. no one would remember you. Um, is there truth to that? Or are you like, no, that's, it actually doesn't work that way at all. No, it's truth to that. Okay. I, I go back right. to school. I'm like a God at yeah. the school. They, <laughs> everyone knows me. It's yeah. insane. And then just by doing busing with the boys and we talked about um, Penny Pitchers Tuesdays, People, everyone at my school, like, bro, we love that episode, the best episode. You put Missouri on the map. Like, I, I mean, I really did it, but hey. <laughs> hey. Missouri stand up. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, Will, uh, going, you mentioned the word Iowa there. I just realized in this white black bowl. Yeah. The white team, we're just Iowa. We're just Iowa. We're gonna try. Oh, we're, oh. we're gonna try to. We're gonna try hang to. On, control, hang on. We're gonna try to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but we're, we're trying we're, to play we're, good We got way more offense than what Iowa produces. What? Uh, I don't know. Y'all about to say you know, we're gonna be blocking Chandler Parsons. We're gonna be blocking. Uh, no, gonna run the ball. Okay, okay, okay. okay. They're gonna Carl. run the ball. Dallas Cowboys. What's his name? Interception hungry, turnover machine. Get after the ball. Get Micah after Parsons. turnovers. <laughs> Micah Parsons. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, guys who can get after the pass rush. Yeah. What happened against the Bills? They lined up, put James Cook in the backfield, and they ran it right at those motherfuckers. But you hey, talking hey, about hey, the uh, Dallas quick, Cowboys? We don't really have a James Cook, or I guess we got Christian McCaffrey. Do we? Got, we we have the best running back in the league right now. Right now, yes, definitely, and Maybe the best Christian quarterback, in yeah. Brock Purdy. And that's not, I'm not sliding ah, anybody. I'm just saying, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he a beast. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, and also you got to think about the coaching staff. Have we have we discussed what to do with the Pacific Islanders? 
<laughs> that's yes that's no. been a talk. <laughs> okay, that's been I, a talk. like that's that could be a good third team. That's all. I'm just saying because he took Puka on his list on the all. And I just list. slid in Vita Vey because I feel like slid, we're a little yeah, light Vita in the Vey. box. But we'll give a, him that because of Mahomes. You just have a draft. We'll give like, you, you that because of Mahomes. We take Mahomes. We'll give you that that light skin. Mahomes, no, 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 you can't just take Mahomes like that. I think that they should get Mahomes. I think if you're a Havsy, then you go to the. See, you're on the black side. That's that's a that's a that's a. There's something either. Yeah, there's a very enlightened there, that, uh, there or very fucking racist. I can't decide which one. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is <laughs> not this racist. <laughs> Put it like this: If you're mixed, and you get to choose, yeah. How many guys you think? Oh, I choose black all day on the on the white side. So it's like if you don't want to be with us, go over there. <laughs> hey, 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 hang on, that 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 could sound that could sound terrible. Oh, that's fucking oh, oh shit. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. No, that that's like a that's like a when a when a play. <laughs> yeah, it's a little it's a little stubby over here. Oh, oh, I kind of said a couple things. That's, uh, that's gonna be that. That's the that's the tag. Right? Uh, that's I know. I gotta will. I gotta fucking will, this, watch TJ. By the way, will Connor for this show right here. Live, <laughs> yeah, check. Oh, oh, There's no live. dumb button. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? It's live. <laughs> hey, but Barstool's Will Compton <laughs> abides by the one drop rule. Well, if you don't want to be with us, the go, example. So go over there. So I don't uh, think we need an example, Will. Yeah. Go ahead. Come on, we need a football analogy to <laughs> okay. help back that up. Right. Yeah. I think Here. there are a lot of examples of times where <laughs> society said, if you have one drop of blood, <laughs> <laughs> then go back where you came from. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the thing. That's not the go back. That is that is Tier Tart. He just got traded from the Titans. Or he got oh, cut. He, he, he asked to be released. And then, you know, I mean, I've been in a team meeting. I forget which outside linebacker wanted a, a trade. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you want to be this way? We'll fucking trade you then. Yeah. Traded him to the shitty Jaguars. Yep. And even made a press and, hey, if you don't want to be here, come let John and I know, and we'll, we'll, we'll take care of what you want. Oh, yeah, he told everybody. No, I know what you're saying. This goes, this goes back to what we said earlier, like the way we talk about this shit in locker rooms. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just when you're like, you don't want to be with this, go over keep there. It, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all yeah. are yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, on yeah. that side, man. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just meaning like you, you want know, to be on the team. You know who's singing the national anthem for this uh, white versus black bull? Mariah Carey? No, I, I think it's uh I think it'd have to be Brad Paisley and Olo Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends. Cause I'm a white man. <laughs> I think it depends uh who's hosting the game. Uh, who, who's <laughs> field? Who's hey, field is that? And I had some funny. Oh yeah. Scenarios. So, so yeah. That, that. Again, it's like how much <laughs> of the locker room though we trying to? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Where's the, where's the game in? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff we got to leave alone. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, we were having fun, though. Maybe a good South Park episode. That'd be a good South That'd Park That'd be episode. a great South Park episode. Yeah, y'all trying to write South Park episodes now? Yeah, I would love to help right. write that one. I yeah, what, where's right where's home field advantage for the black guys and where's home field advantage for the – like, where, where, are you, where are you playing the game? Atlanta for the blacks. Yeah. That feels. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty I think strong. he's exactly right. That feels yeah. Strong. yeah, yeah, Atlanta. Green yeah. Bay for the for the white guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wisconsin. Green Bay or leaning yeah. into Bills Mafia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bills Mafia. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. We, let's be honest. We gotta take the game where it's cold. We gotta take the game where it's cold. We gotta take the game where it's cold. We gotta pray for snow. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Huh. We got a tough. We got a tough outfit though. Oh yeah. A lot of lot of uh, coaches on the field. Gritty guys. Yes. Sneaky yeah. athletes. Yes. Hard workers for yeah. sure. Yeah. Seen last out. Yeah. Um, the high fives when we kick a field goal uh, <laughs> to oh. end the first half to cut it to twenty-one three uh-huh. going into halftime and the coaches are clapping it up like momentum boys momentum. <laughs> momentum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the thing that would be that's y'all gonna be a great have moment to for score. us. Yeah. yeah, every drive. I think they're, I think you, y'all, 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 y'all can't yeah. even get in. Y'all, I guess it would be just be a field goal. Be out. We're gonna settle for three. I will use Reed for Kansas City as our field goal kicker. Reed from Kansas City to safety. Who kicked it from the Texans too? He, he oh yeah, it. another the other running back. He That's was a running true. back. Um, damn, I forget his name. Yeah, see, see the I'm, the black the black team does our skills as a hobby. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I was, I was going to say now that <laughs> I'm like, hey, we, sure. let me go out there and boot this thing. How, how long was that field goal? Like thirty some, like thirty right? some yards. Yeah. yeah, like thirty some yards. Their safeties just get bored and say, "Well, I'll, I'll fucking kick this." <laughs> yeah. I kick this it's not that black dudes aren't kickers because they can't kick. It's that they can do literally everything. They're busy else. doing yeah. <laughs> They're just doing the important like, position. Why the fuck would I just bother with kicking when I can yeah. do everything else? Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> 
God, that is uh, awesome. That shit is fun. That is fucking. Would would awesome. football be the best sport? Uh, the most evenly matched. Like, is there is there a better sport where basketball probably? Well, we'd have if we're involving the Europeans, correct? Yes, uh, well, you got oh, it. No, the Europeans to, definitely. You yeah. have to. You have, have to. The Europeans. Yeah. yeah. All right. Of course. We I don't. You, would basketball be a close game? Like Jokic and I mean, Luka, not I, Chet. How many Yo- black players is in hockey? I don't think it, I, we, not, I think Seth Jones. Yeah, y'all gonna work us in hockey. I'm just trying to see. I'm curious I mean, if y'all do have like baseball a lineup. Baseball. Similar. Base. Oh, y'all baseball. Yeah. baseball because we get the Cubans. We get the Cubans. Baseball. Now hold no, on. Come on. Hold now. on. They, I, I don't know, know about that. Oh, come on now. You know they look black. You get the Cubans, you we know. get the Dominicans. Nah. Fair? Fair? <laughs> All right, everybody relax. Yeah. We get we get David Ortiz. <laughs> we're, we're really that, having a meeting to split up the. Uh, remember, the like remember the the rule is like if they if you can say the N word, you should. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the rule. So Mincy could be on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, y'all got to go do it. What time is the pro football show? We got time. Okay, I don't. I don't know. So keep these conversations going. We got Delaney here. <laughs> uh, what else is going? Florida State is discussing a future their future in the ACC after college football playoff yeah. snub. Uh, no fucking shit. <laughs> right. Turns no out, uh, turns out ACC didn't do shit for them. Yeah. And now they're not. How egregious is that to you guys that Florida State was? I know this is old news and not at all. Really. To death, but not, yeah. it's. I think it sucks for Florida State, it but does. I do think the best four teams are subjectively in. Okay. All right. I mean, I mean. All right. Well, that settles. That's that. what I, I mean. Think about it. If like, what's the what's the what's the line? Georgia versus Florida State right now. Well, that doesn't. Shit. It's like I know it doesn't. But doesn't. What, what? Yeah. That what doesn't. metrics. That doesn't. I mean. Uh, but I mean. I mean. It's we don't have to hash this argument out again. We don't. I was yeah. just curious what no, their no, thoughts I were. I mean, they, they Florida State thoughts. not good enough to be in the playoff, but. That they deserve to be in the playoff. It's sure. two different, two different questions. Right, but the argument of yeah. deserving and best team. But now nobody's playing good. in that fucking. You know, his, like bowl games are done. They're done who, forever. You know who is good enough to be in the playoff? Coors Light. Coors Light helps you find moments to unwind. Big work presentation followed with a happy hour, some friends, and a cold Coors Light weekend chores. Take Saturday off and hit the tailgate, even if you don't have tickets to the game. Whenever you need to hit reset, reach for Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue. When your beer is cold, that way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, made to chill. I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for snow in Chicago, so I can throw Coors Lights in the snow. I, 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 Where is I the snow? Do... I don't know. Thought it'd I don't be here know, by now. Yeah. But I'm excited to throw a bunch of Coors Lights in the snow and just uh, I'll, that'll be fun for like two hours, mm-hmm. and then I'll be like, all right, I'm just, over the just snow. for the picture, but just for the line, picture. Yeah. It's like I don't need to walk to the fridge. I'm just gonna walk outside and grab Coors Light. But the mountains will be. I bet the mountains will be blue as hell. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com/slash/Titus. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Have you shown them the trophy yet? Yeah. Do you guys know? Uh, I know. I know you're not a basketball guy, Will, but uh, I'm sure you're, you Woo! know about the uh, Chili's three for me three point contest. Um, Damn. That uh, was won by. Yours truly, Sean Marion took part in it. How uh, uh, how bad did you win? It was a blowout. It was, well, it was a blowout. You the the, the second best well, round was eighteen. True. That is true. The second I, best I had twenty in the final round. The second best was eighteen, which was me in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's second get best. let's get serious. It was also me. I have a serious question. And now that I got you and I got Delaney and we have the the uh, everybody's represented here. Okay. What's your, what's your favorite Christmas movie? My favorite, The Grinch, Jim Carrey. Delaney, that's a very divisive movie. I'm gonna have to say um, Die Hard. God damn it, Delaney. Okay, I just Friday afternoon. I didn't want to have. What was yours, Connor? Elf. 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 What do you think about Elf? I think Elf is a we solid like Elf. Christmas movie. Yeah. Why well, are you speaking on behalf of the- We talked about this. We we literally did this. Uh, <laughs> we yeah, did we don't have a strategy it. meeting. We yeah. did our tear talk for Bus, and then he was on it. So yeah. we was going over all the Christmas yeah. movies. You've teared. You've you've already teared the. Uh, yeah, Christmas movie. my personal favorite is The Grinch. My two is. Um, now I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I forget which. Because I know three is the Christmas story. You remember three, four but not Christmas. two. Four Christmas. Four Christmases. Yes. 
Four Christmases. No, no, that's, that's too many Christmases. That's way too many Christmases. That's too many. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, they're not. They're talking about four anymore. years yeah. there. I mean, I don't have that much but time I to just, go to a movie. Uh, yeah, but I love Vince Vaughn. Didn't the uh, Didn't the uh, Ducks the uh, the Scrooge mm -hmm. the Scrooge uh, with the Huey Dewey and Louie the the Scrooge McDuck duck? Uh huh. Yeah. Didn't they teach us that Ducktail Christmas Ducktails? That's what I was thinking of. Thank you. Um, Christmas every day is actually a bad thing. Did they? Pretty sure that was. When the did they do that? Yeah, Connor knows what I'm talking about. That's one of the. That's their little Christmas movies. Like I wish it was Christmas every day. And then by day like 40 of Christmas, they're like, you know what? Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck this. This is too many Christmases. So I don't know. That's the danger. Maybe four is the sweet spot. Maybe four is. I've never seen four Christmases. I don't know. What oh, I was gonna say. Uh, I don't know. You never, never seen, seen four. Christmas? No, what, what, what was four Christmas? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Who, who, who's the Vince uh, Vaughn? That's the guy. There. That's the guy John, from, from Meet the Parents, uh, right? Yeah. Favreau. John Favreau. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically. Him and his girlfriend, uh, what's her name? Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. Oh, they April go, from Eastbound and Down. Yeah, April. Oh, yeah. Guys, April. I both fucking, of their sets I, of parents are split up, I so they go to Reese four different. Uh, I love that show. I love Reese Witherspoon so much. Oh, you like? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> that sweet home Alabama. Mm -hmm. mm. Is that what you call it? Oh, the movie. That's the, the movie. movie yeah. Okay, I thought we were talking about her pussy. <laughs> I, I mean, say. I, I thought, right. <laughs> say. <laughs> Barstool's Will Compton refers to Reese Witherspoon's pussy as Sweet Home Alabama. That's Barstool's Brandon Walker. Oh, well, I don't know. You were on the show. You were a guest. Um, What's your favorite? What are your top three Christmas movies? I My number one's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and I truly don't understand why it's not everybody's number one with a bullet. I don't think it's close. Well, we all said that is because that's just a stable. Like, we know that. Everyone's going to pick Christmas vacation. You don't want to be a basic like, bitch and pick yeah, what everybody's yeah, going to pick. We ain't trying to drink Starbucks and wear st uh, juicy sweatpants, you know? <laughs> I saw you wearing juicy sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, what's number two? While you're thinking, I do need, I do need to get off my chest a big... Fuck you for a dozen trivia. Fuck me. You got it wrong. Fuck who? You. Fuck me? You. Has this aired yet? The dozen trivia, has it aired yet? I don't know, has it? I, the, the, the one you're talking about that I fucked you on, has it aired yet? I have no clue. So <laughs> we, we can't talk about it if it hasn't aired yet. But if I got something on my chest and I've got to tell you it, I'm going to tell you. I don't you. think that overrides... Jeffy Lowe will get mad at both of us. It doesn't ruin any part of the game except for that one moment. Well, now people are going to know that I fucked you on college football. But I really did think that guy went to Stanford. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. That's a Stanford-ass name, dude. That's a Stanford-ass name. Well, he hung up the phone. You. Kevin Walter. I cannot tell you how pissed off I was, Mark. He hung up the phone and then immediately goes, he went to Arizona State, right? Yeah, I did. All of us in the room. I, yeah. I, I knew it was either Arizona State or Stanford, but the name was Kevin Walter, and I was like, that's a Stanford-ass name. I was truly you, so mad at you. You fucked me on a phone a friend, too. Andrew Walter, not Kevin. Andrew Walter. You uh, fucked me on a phone a friend, too. I did that on purpose. Sorry. Because we were talking, <laughs> you and uh, Jack Mack. Yeah. And I was like, Dana, why don't you just go down the hall and ask Jack Mack, All right, let's use it on Brandon. Yeah. No, I'm the better call. It's, you're right to call me. You're clearly not the better call. I, you know, can, am I allowed mistakes? Is a man allowed to make mistakes in his life? Is a man allowed to wake up in the day and not be perfect all the time? Is a man allowed that? Yeah, as long as that we get a, a simple As long apology. as it benefits you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah simple apology. Okay. Hey, I'm sorry. You are number one on the, uh, the, the boomer list for college football. That is true. Number one. I didn't know what the sign was. Uh, number one college football media personality in America, according to Big Game Boomer. Did you know that, Delaney Walker? I did. Oh, you did? I, I, no, I did, and I'm just messing with you. I saw it right now. Okay, because I was, <laughs> I was prepared for the answer to be no, but then you fucked me up, and now you fucked me up twice. Uh, yeah, number one, media, college football media personality. What were you, number six? Seven. Four. Six or seven? Seven. Portnoy was, was six. Yes. He can't name yeah, Maybe you should have called Dave for the phone a friend. I wonder if Dave would have known. You could call anybody. He probably would have. Yeah. Anybody else on that list probably would have known. That's mother... Mm -hmm. No, no. Dave probably would have known. He wouldn't have known what sport that guy played. Um... All right, what else we got? Anything? Uh, you were thinking of Christmas movie number two. Christmas was I? Movie number two. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Elf is up. I, I like Elf in the top five. What about uh, uh, I like mm. A Wonderful Life? Um, no, I never, I never saw it. I've never seen it. It's a Wonderful Life. Is it, what do you mean? I'm aware of it, but I've never seen it. All right, yeah, go ahead. I uh, see it, see it, Lane. No. What do you mean you've never seen it? That probably came out when you were in high school, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you old bitch. You're just, you're just running, <laughs> you're running, <laughs> you're running all right, old all right. wrinkly ball face, dude. Ass. All right, now that he's with gone, your old how, ass. Now he's gone. How are we gonna win this game? <laughs> now, now I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> There's a couple different options we're looking at out there. We might have to look at playing a four-four, and you have our mm -hmm. our our backfield is going to have to be. I like how you're answering this for real. Okay. Reed Blankenship, mm -hmm. Harrison Smith, and if we got two corners out there, if we're if we're doing a four-four, then you only need three DBs. Yeah. And to which you have Reed, you have uh, Harrison, and then probably you know we got to plug somebody from the farm system that we got out in Iowa. Well, the good news is we only have to go back 20 to 30 years to get white cornerbacks. Yeah. So, and then Christian, he can play both ways. I've talked to him. We've been, we've been. Oh, he's ready. Is yeah. He ready? He okay. truly is ready. And he even told me, like, he basically is like, hey, coach, even though I'm not the head coach on this team, he's yeah. like, hey, coach, like, I can play safety. Don't even worry about it. So, like, you're going to have to, you might have to you touch the rock. he can tackle? He said, "Check the tape," which I did. Check the tape on the interception against Seattle last weekend. That's he, one. He had, that's why. Nice that's one tackle. tackle, man. Dude, I'm telling you, if this man says he can play safety, he can play safety. I'm not going to doubt Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I'm not going to doubt him. him. But I like us. I like us for a few reasons. Yes, we got to run the football well. We got to control the clock. We got to win time of possession, and we're yeah. going to have to sneak. We're going to have to win the turnover battle some way, somehow. But I like um, the poise that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. I like the short-term two-week preparation. I think that plays in our favor. I, I just do. I what? think we I think we have guys ready to plug and play because we don't have a lot to choose from, so everybody kind of knows who's playing and who's going to rotate, right? The other side will be bickering the whole time. They need a lot more spotlight guys, a lot more me guys. Well, I think it's for us. <laughs> the, oh, what, what, what? You feel uncomfortable? <laughs> Some reality just you know, is uh, a uh, is a triple option package a good thing for us or a bad thing? Would that be a good idea if we had like a if we had like a triple option unit? But we don't have a running quarterback, do we? What are you talking about? We got Josh Allen. I I see I, I see is a, he world, a triple option running quarterback or is he like I, a, you got to play to the strength? I think that that's like a good point, but ultimately we have to play to the strength of uh, right now on my. Uh, I just see it in special list, situations. It's just like it's, on my staff, Shanahan is the OC. Okay, I just see it's like second and four from midfield. And and all of a sudden we just we're all of our skill guys are running off yeah. and we're bringing in a whole new package. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And yeah. we line up and run some triple option razzmatazz at him just out of nowhere. Have you considered the razzmatazz? <sighs> How much razzmatazz we? Okay, yeah, right? We got to do anything that. Can Who's also, your staff? My staff is uh, GM is John Lynch. <laughs> That's a bad start. Head coach. Well, the reason why is I feel very I'm a little heavy in the uh, Shanahan tree, so I think the okay. Lynch. Shanahan connection will be positive for us. Have you ever met I'm gonna anybody go, named Lynch? Is Jane Lynch related to John Lynch? Is Jane no. Lynch related to John Lynch? I have no Forget clue. Okay. I have no clue. Well, right. Head coach, Sean McVay. Okay. Got to have Sean, yeah. OC, Kyle Shanahan. Uh -huh. Quarterbacks coach, Mike McDaniels. Running backs coach, I'm throwing Sloak in there. Bob Sloak. What, what, Mike, De Mike McDaniels, he's got to touch a... No, no, I, just, I, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know the answer to a lot, a lot of these. Who's Sloak? Uh, Bobby Sloak. He oh. was uh, he oh, was Bobby with the, he was with yeah. the Niners previously. Now he's the OC for the Texans. Just won a tough game last week with mm -hmm. Case Keenum as the quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there for a lot of CJ Stroud success. You got D'Amico Ryan, so he's the head man over there. Um, wide receiver coach Wes Welker, O line coach Bill Callahan, truly one of the best in the game and perfect for the system that we need to implement as a ball club. Tight ends coach Dan Campbell, our DC Steve Spagnola. Linebacker coach, myself, yours truly. Linebacker assistant, Mike Vrabel. Outside linebackers coach. Sounds like you're just saying all the now same guy. On, I, 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 now, one issue I think we're going to run into, Will, is you have a lot of head coaches in assistant roles. Our ego is going to get in the way in the coaching. A lot of me guys here. Potentially. However, I'm glad you asked that question, Mark. These guys, they, you don't just become a head coach. You go through the system of assistance, coordinator, like we're our guys' best skill sets. In Washington, my first two years, or my first few years or whatever. Well, he's back, he's back. Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, um, that, might, that might be it. 
Jim Tomsula, Greg Minuski, they're all on the same staff. Lafleur was on that staff. Okay. This coaching tree is all very. You're familiar still working with each other. Bob Slowick, McVeigh, Shanahan, they're all part of the same tree. Mike McDaniel's, they've yeah. all coached together. So again, it's leaning into their strengths. I like Mike in the quarterback room with his personality and everything else to kind of handle that two weeks of offense. Kyle Shanahan, let him be a brainiac up top. McVeigh, he gets the nod as the Hoya head coach because he won it so young, and he was. Even though Shanahan was the OC when he was the quarterback's coach of Washington, I think this is where you just gotta you gotta get everybody into a room and say, guys, one game, one game. One, we gotta put game. it all. We gotta put our swords down for one game. Mm -hmm. It's like the end of Little Giants. That one exactly. Time. Yeah. Sixty minutes for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. That's varsity blues. In the, to round out the end, you got Jim Tom Sula on the D line, Greg Minussi as outside linebacker coach, and Dick LeBeau as the DB coach. Mm. Dick LeBeau still alive? Yeah, he's still, I think he's still alive. <laughs> he's still alive. He's got to be old uh, as fuck. He old, though, for sure. Can we get the uh, coach of the Browns, the Hard Knocks guy with the big stomach? Who, oh, the, uh, yeah, oh, the offensive line coach? Can we get him, <laughs> hut, hut, hut. <laughs> we get him on stuff? We get him as Callahan. Big Dom? I've big seen, Dom on, I, uh, yeah, I've seen uh, Bill Callahan work. That is that is who we want as our O-line coach. He, he was the O-line coach? I feel like there's uh, – Yeah, Washington, guy? yep. I think, is that a little Nebraska? For Dallas when Dallas – Nebraska ties right there talking? No, he was. He needed to be out at Nebraska. If I wanted, you wanted Nebraska, you would have saw Bo Pelini as the DB coach. But I went with Dick LeBeau. I feel bad for that guy because uh, it seems like he's had a long storied coaching career in the NFL, and I know him for one thing, and it's having a gigantic stomach and saying "set hot." <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. it. Hey, His entire identity has yes, <laughs> boiled down anybody to. Knows about <laughs> it. We were talking strategy while you were out, like how are we actually going to win? Yeah. And again, I think you got to rush three the majority of the time. You got to drop. You got to have four underneath and four deep. So if you just run a true four deep, you're running a lot more match man zone. When you're running four underneath and four deep, you're running a spot drop underneath, similar to a cover three. Think cover three, Brandon. And then in the back end, don't get beat deep. Don't get beat on double moves. Trust your Now, counterpoint, counterpoint. Tyreek Hill is alive and exists. I hold on. I got I, I That's have That's why we gotta play zone all game. Wait. I have the ultimate trump card that no one's brought up yet. Trump. <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> we have all the refs. No, it's 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 even it's fifty fifty. Have, like, all the it's refs. fifty fifty. We have to go fifty. We're gonna have all the refs. We have to go fifty fifty. You gotta go. Well, how many refs? Or Jerome Boger is it, right? And what is it? It is fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah it'll be five guys, white, five black. Stripes. There's not ten officials, are there? You got There's most six, of the refs. Right? Six. So are white. Oh, and then the replay. Then the replay refs, and yeah. then, uh, and then you gotta have a woman out there for some reason. How many? How many? The head official. He got to be mixed. How many black refs are there? Is there's no <laughs> How many mixed refs, refs are there? <laughs> Not none. I don't think yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They don't uh they, hey, they're, refs ref shirts are black and white for a yeah. reason, guys. That's then yeah. right now is when we need to run the scene from uh Friday Night Lights. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, how many how many black stripes are on them zebras? Yeah. I figure the same amount as as there are white stripes. Is that your favorite football movie? Top three, but I would say Remember the Titans is one. Yeah, it checks out. You don't like Remember the Titans, right? Uh, just, Why does that check out? Because uh, it's just a corny, goofy movie, and it's just, how's it corny? Like how is it corny? They they they, the one they thing, sing na 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 hey hey goodbye at a funeral. Yeah, because the, they because like at a funeral he dies. Hey, yeah, he's hey, saying goodbye. The lady, not, na na you na sing na that at a funeral. Na 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 na, hello. Motherfucker's that. laying there dead, and you're singing na na na, hey hey. Because he's dead, dude. If he was singing na 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 na, hello, that would not make sense. <laughs> There's no na 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 na, hello. That the, the song doesn't hey, even exist. You know, you know why he doesn't like the movie? Why? Don't don't why, don't why don't do. Oh uh, yeah, integration. He wanted <laughs> yeah. water fountains to say the same. Yeah, it's integration. Yeah, it's a he, source he wanted. He hates to see that that yeah. had success. Yeah, it is. Like the, I feel like us as athletes, we're all a product kind of of that movie. Right, like we're an example, right. and he feels well, we're very all, comfortable. We're, we're all right. athletes here. We're, but we're, you don't, you don't really have any. Yeah, but you don't really have any experience playing sports with black guys or like being involved with. Uh, yeah. Sporting competition. Well, I. With it's funny. Yeah, I uh, I won the 1997 West Point High School slam dunk contest. I actually beat Dwayne Jefferson. He played in Greece. Who cares? <laughs> in middle school, in eighth grade, I have the I have the record for high jump. But it's like, okay, that's at a school. Yeah, dude. There weren't really any black guys at the school. <laughs> there were my school's eighty percent black. Is that true? I don't know. Why are you looking at him? Because <laughs> well, I we need no a fact way, check. No. I'm not just yeah, gonna let you, you say that. I'm from I'm from West Point, Mississippi. Uh, he, no yeah, he, he probably. 
uh, Mississippi. Yeah, he probably for sure. I went to uh, public school in Mississippi. It's all white and black there for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. The, anyway, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> huh. uh, all right, y'all. If y'all want to go, y'all. I don't know how to how to how to land this plane. Oh, like properly say goodbye. No, I just. Oh, do I need to read an ad? Excuse me. Well, yeah. I gotta read hey, Delaney's got a call. We're gonna get out of call. here. Got, you get it. I'm still nah, nah. Nah, he's gonna use this opportunity to leave. Thank yeah, you, Brandon's boys. Brandon's been trying to get you guys to leave. No, that's not know, true. So. Thank you, guys. Well, appreciate it. You're sticking around for the yak, right? That's a good. Uh, that's a good hoodie. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, I got the dap. You got the handshake. That's interesting. Did he dap you? Yeah, he dap. He How dap. He dap him and handshook me. He gave you the handshake. Okay, he just left. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's the verbal dap. All right. All right. All right, Mark. Yeah. Um, an ultimate pro football GM, prove your skills in managing a pro football team. Speaking of putting together rosters. <laughs> <laughs> this game has a realistic feel. You can draft, trade, and manage every strategic decision. The game is fun, addicting, and easy to learn. It's a mobile game that's completely free with no ads and playable offline. To download the game, go to barstoolgm.com or look up ultimate pro football GM on the app store. Use code BARSTOOL in all caps in the game store for a 100% free boost to your franchise. Uh, so I got something before we go. Um, they were talking about Christmas movies. And yeah. I, it it kind of got me into the holiday spirit. Uh, we've, we've done a good job. Uh, I think TJ's decorated. TJ, did you do all this? Yeah. Decorating the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been doing a great job all month of keeping the Yuletide gay. Um, but <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't until they, they started talking about their favorite Christmas movies that I thought, you know what? It yeah. is about that time. Like we should do this as a show. Um, somebody on the show should prepare a list of their favorite Christmas movies, oh, and fuck. then we could all talk about them. How many? Um, so I thought I should do that today. I thought I would start us off. So I I put together my list of my top ten Christmas movies. If this is, I know. First I'm of all, I won't say I appreciate this. I appreciate you bringing okay. this content to the show. Okay. Um, I I know it gets like. Arguments do arise, and I know I'm kind of stepping into the lion's den doing this here, but uh, someone had to do it. Someone on the show had to step yeah, up and do they it. They really did. Um, and I figured I would do it. So here we go. I'm going to start. <laughs> this is a little. <laughs> I'm actually. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here, and I'm like, damn it, Mark, you did it again. You cheeky <laughs> son of a bitch. Because uh, I'm not going to start with 10. I'm actually going to start with 497. <laughs> um, at number 497, and this is just to like kind of drive home how bad this movie is, I think. Yeah. I have a Flintstones Christmas 1977 <laughs> okay. uh, cartoon. Uh, I love the Flintstones. I love Christmas. For me, it the 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 timeline just doesn't add, add, uh, it doesn't add up. I, I, this I, is I have a question. Why 497? So just you just know there's four. Yeah, I just thought better. Like I just thought it'd be kind of funny and fun. Yeah, to, okay. to kind of drive home the point that like I, got it. I I have my top ten, but this one's so bad that I'm gonna put it at 497. Um. But the Flintstones are prehistoric people. They are. Jesus had, was not born. He was born after the Flintstones. There would be no Christmas in the Flintstones world. So I, ever since I was a young child, I watched this and I said, no, no, this makes no sense. And when I watch Christmas movies, I need some realism. I don't. I can't. I can't do like this. You know. Right. Magical type bullshit. Right. Where you need a realistic kinda, Santa yeah, Claus. I need a yeah. realistic Santa Claus. I need a realistic plot. Yeah. I can't be having these fantasy elements and timelines not matching up and all that sort of shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Flintstones Christmas is to me. Um, at 496 on my list, Polar <laughs> Express. Some people have it lower on their list. Uh, I know that's going to be a hot take. Some people put that a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, but you I, like it. I do like it. Yeah. I, I think Polar Express deserves a little more recognition. Um, so, yeah, I have those two right there. But, uh, all right, here's my top ten. At number ten, a little bit of a basic bit, bitch pick. Um, it's it's more – a lot of people see this as more of an action movie, obviously, and it, it becomes a debate every – at this time of year, and it's like, that's not really a Christmas movie. It's really more of an action movie and yada, yada, whatever. For me, it's a Christmas movie. I'm talking, of course, about Lethal Weapon. Um, <laughs> Lethal Weapon with the, the final showdown happening mm -hmm. uh, on Christmas Eve, and yeah. no spoilers, but um, – the weapon yeah, is lethal. The, the weapon is very lethal on uh, Christmas Eve, and of course, there's Christmas decorations throughout the movie. Uh, I have I have Lethal Weapon at number ten on my list. Pretty good. Uh, at number nine, great movie, Rocky IV. Um, one of the all time great Christmas movies. Uh, are, the big fight against Drago happens just, on Christmas Day. What? Um, are you saying that's Christmas movie simply because there's snow? There is snow. 
A lot of snow. There's snow. He yeah. works out in the snow. He works out in the snow. I don't really remember any Christmas imagery in the movie. Wasn't the wasn't the fight on Christmas? I don't think they have Christmas in in Russia. Mm. But there's snow. In the Soviet Union, Christmas has you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rocky Four. There's that Rocky Four is a Christmas. Rocky Four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are, are sure you what? arguing it shouldn't no, be on no. the list or that it's not a Christmas? I'm, it is a Christmas. No, no, no. If you're arguing whether it's, I'm be not on arguing the list. either. It's okay, your list. Okay, it's your list. Okay. The fight did take place on Christmas Day. It took place on Christmas yeah. Day. It's a Christmas movie. That's number nine. Uh, number eight, great movie. Uh, love this one. Love the me and the boys get together. Uh, we we throw back some henny eggnog and um, this is just a, just a classic classic Christmas movie. Sound of Music. I mean, f- when you look at me, you look at a guy and that that just loves the Sound of Music. With the, you got the Von Trapps, you got the uh, I assume the fucking Nazis are in there somewhere, um, singing about their bullshit. It's it's just it's it, when I turn on ABC. And that block says that for the next seven and a half hours, mm-hmm. with commercials, with Timothy Chalamet saying, <laughs> in the middle of the movie, 12 different times, I, I just go bananas. I can't get enough of Sound of Music. Um, Is the man bursarded? <laughs> <laughs> Sound of Music, great Christmas movie about uh, fleeing Nazi, or mm-hmm. fleeing Austria to escape the Nazis. Really beautiful so, uh, theme. Number seven is Die Hard. Number seven, uh, Die Hard. Great Christmas movie. Um, John McCain uh, was. This was before he ran for president. Okay. Uh, All right. And had Sarah. Was Palin. Sarah Palin there? Sarah Palin was not in the picture yet. Um, I think she comes along in Die Hard three or four. Or, uh, <laughs> boy, this was this was pre Sarah Palin. John McCain, uh, crawl. It, number one wife beater movie too. By the way. And featuring Sarah Palin <laughs> as Sarah Palin. Um. Is, is that the number one wife beater movie? Not like Beatty and the wife. I'm talking yeah. about the tank top, which uh, he's just crawling around with wearing a wife did, beater. Did 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 uh, did Vin Diesel wear one in the first Fast and the Furious? Family. Hmm. I feel like he might have. He may have. All right. Number six on my list: Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now wait a minute. Does, does, is Jesus even in that universe? Yeah, of course. I told dude. I told you with the Flintstones. I don't. Okay. All would, right. Would it be on the list if it was like? If it didn't make any sense. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. I just feel like I don't. I've never seen any Christmas imagery in the Harry Potters either. Yeah, they got the. They go on Christmas break. That's part of the. That's like a big theme of the movie. Is is there's a Christmas tree in some scenes and shit. Okay. And then right. they go home for Christmas. Cause well, wait, which Harry Potter was this? Uh, the Sorcerer's Stone. So are the top five all going to be Harry Potters? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. We'll all right. Find out right, right now. Sorry. Sorry. Number five uh, on the list: uh, Christmas Carol. Uh, great film. Um, I don't I th- really know if that's a Christmas movie. Like, I, I just... Hear me out. I feel like it's more about the Carol than it is about... Oh, well, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, I'm talking... There There have been a lot of versions. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about the 1993 porno starring uh, <laughs> Diva, uh, which launched her career uh, into other titles such as Seymour Butts Goes Nuts and Stacked with Honors. Um, she played Carol in this in this film. Uh, great film. Great film. I was six years old when it came out. Uh, Christmas Carol. Can't recommend it enough for all you youngsters at home. <laughs> Number five. I'm just getting I'm just getting volleyballed around this court. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, uh, Frozen. <laughs> That's just cold again. That's no, all it no, is. No, no, no. There's snow. There's snow, though. So there's snow and cold. There's a snowman. Okay. Uh. Isn't it in the middle of the summer that movie take pla- yes. takes place? Yes. No, no, that can't be right because there's a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Yeah, but there's a there's a curse on her, and that's what makes it cold. Let it snow. Let it let it let it grow. Let it snow. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Um, but if it's but there's snow. But, but but Frosty the Snowman is a Christmas movie, and that has a snowman. Continue. Okay. Uh, number three, Trading Places. Dan Aykroyd wears a Santa suit that one time. Uh, great, great. And there, there's like a Christmas party, I think, at the office. Uh, great movie. Um, kind of got the the black and white theme, too. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, yeah to really was, continue uh, the theme of the, the day. theme of the day. Uh, number two, Mean Girls. Great film. Very funny film. Uh, they do like the Jingle Bell Rock thing where they're wearing the Santa hats. Uh, just a classic Christmas movie. Um, that I, I, I laugh when I watch that movie. Sue me. I think it's funny. I think it's funny. A lot of a lot of people say women can't be funny. I think they can, and I think Mean Girls is proof positive. Uh, one of the great all time Christmas movies. And number one on my list might be my favorite movie of all time: Dumb and Dumber, the number one Christmas movie. Uh, Harry Dunn and Lloyd Christmas go across Fuck. the country <laughs> to deliver a briefcase to to Mary Swanson. Uh, it is the son of a bitch got me. It is, 
my favorite Christmas movie. So there's your list. Those are my top ten Christmas. I mean, there's literally movies. nothing I can say because the thing about Dumb and Dumber, it has snow. It does have snow. <laughs> it has it snow. Uh, <laughs> that's my favorite scene in Dumb and Dumber, by the way, where uh, where him and Mary Swanson, Harry and Mary Swanson are on the slopes and she's playing with him and and throws a snow on him and he's like, <laughs> all right, motherfucker. <laughs> Just winds up and smokes her. Uh, um, all right. Anything else? I think uh, Nebraska. We didn't get to it when we were talking to Will, but I think they had the coolest National Signing Day videos. They they animated their like all time highlights into NCAA video games and put the players in them. Yes, that cool. is quite good. Right I on. haven't seen them, but that is quite good. Oh yeah, players, they're in the game. I'm all about this. That's pretty awesome. Wait. I mean, they got the whole thing. They got the... Uh... This has to just be a nightmare for the graphics departments for these teams to have to do this for 25-plus players. Less than a minute remaining in the third quarter of this year's Fiesta Bowl between the top-ranked Florida Gators and the Nebraska Court Huskers. Huskers Why did, <laughs> this is like a... Why did Florida get the love here to get in the Fiesta Bowl? This is a real highlight, but they put Rayola in it, but it's in NCAA. Oh, I see, I see, I see, okay. Get stood up for a gain of about, oh, he's still going. Look at Dylan Rayola streaking down the sideline, 15-10-5. Touchdown, Yeah, pretty good. I love that Nebraska is still stuck in the running quarterback phase. Yeah. And yeah. mm-hmm. this fantasy they played on their yeah. head, they signed the number one quarterback. Yeah. They're like, you know what we're going to do with them? And in their in their dreams, he becomes Tommy Frazier. He becomes Tommy <laughs> <laughs> He's Eric Crouch 2.0. <laughs> uh, all right. Is that the show? Yeah, is shut her it? down. Well, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, last show, last live show before. Uh, For, well, then Henny Friday is, is obviously the big send off. But yeah, tomorrow's the last live show. And it's last Thursday of the year. Last Thursday. Shit, you're right. Yeah. Uh-oh. You okay? Oh, I'll think of something. Oh, Jersey. Connor, you know what I would love? What? I think you would have some interesting takes on your top ten Christmas movie list. I would love to hear what yours are. I'll come tomorrow with, okay. with the you work on list. that. Yeah, I will. If we have, actually, if we have time, if we have time. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we don't need to do that. No, know. no, I, I do want him to have. I'll him come ready. prepared. Have him ready. All right, all right. That's the show. See you guys tomorrow. Probably gonna suck. That's how ball is done.